Welcome to Vicious Talk with Benny P. Coming up, episode 66, we got a really fun guest today, Bruce Clausen, like the pickle he used to say. He's a uh, Lincoln, Nebraska native, alum, alumnus of University of Nebraska Lincoln class of uh, 2018, former co-worker of mine at the Arizona Coyotes in the, in the ticket sales department, currently working with the Colorado Avalanche, the NHL's National Hockey League's Colorado, Colorado Avalanche. He's a member services executive, uh, a good friend of mine. Welcome, welcome to the podcast, Bruce. Good to have you. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Definitely, it's uh, it's hilarious because we spent a lot of time in like the bullpen or the, the little basement area we used to work in at the Coyotes, talking about how we would bring you on and we would like have hypothetical podcast conversations and be like, <laughs> you know, how's this gonna go? And, and Bruce, Bruce would always have hilarious takes, so I knew eventually this was gonna have to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, being on a podcast or just having one in general, it, I mean, your brain can just go so many places. And that's the best part of it is you, you want a structure enough, but then you kind of want that creative freedom within it. So it's it's a ton of fun. It doesn't matter if there's one person listening or, or 50. Um, yeah. You put a mic in front of it and totally. it's, just, it's, it's so much fun. It's effortless. Totally. Oh, I got to add my, my vicious talk background to the podcast for any video listeners. There we go. Oh, or, there you go. <laughs> your vicious talk. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I totally feel that because I mean, when creating a podcast, you have some. I've had some episodes inevitably that you know get like less than ten listens almost. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit. Maybe that would be like maybe my worst of the worst. But like, sure. you know, I've had some. You know, typically they range around like fifty to a hundred to. I think at an average, I think I'm averaging a little bit over a hundred listens a podcast. Yeah, uh, but I've had some that reach like like almost three thousand or so, like twenty five hundred or so, and so it's like. Really, it's the guest, the topic, the time you post it at, any sort of randomness of it, especially if you don't have like a – I mean, I, I try my best to try to keep, you know, the postings routine and stuff, but it's hard to, you know, post like two or three podcasts a week, how the professionals are doing it and, and the ones that are making money, you know, you know podcasting. It's like it, it, when you do it as a hobby and, and as your passion interest, I mean, yeah, you could work as hard as you want on it, but your, your ability to consistently put up like – multiple podcasts every week is not as not as easy when you you know you're not getting paid for it. you got other stuff you gotta you gotta take care yeah. of first no you're right and and we'll go into it later but when we had a podcast back in school what we learned the most important thing was just being consistently when when we would totally. release it, and you're almost conditioning people to know when an episode is coming out when they expect you when to expect it so it's almost just like habitual at that point um and as stupid as we were on the podcast we we did take it seriously in terms of like when we released it and like the promotion of it and stuff too so yeah uh, yeah for sure but when you're not being paid for it it's it's kind of like your golf game like you suck at it and you don't do it enough so <laughs> right i mean it's, it's it's like that nerve you just are those baseball like trainings where, you know, you gotta, you can't, yeah. you gotta use it or you'll lose it. You know, you can't yeah. just hop right into it. You know, the more podcasts you're putting out, the better you get. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure I mean, you got a taste of it too. It's a joy to, you know, work on it, especially when you get to catch up with, with old friends, like, like you and I, and, you know, just in general, that's one of my favorite aspects of doing this whole thing. So yeah, really glad no, I was able to bring you on. No, absolutely. Definitely. Bruce, let's uh, dive into some of our, our initial conversation we wanted to discuss. You mean, <laughs> Some of my podcasts that the the angles are to try to uh, discuss like career ambitions for young either either college students or uh, college graduates who just got you know just finished their university got their degrees and looking into yeah. to dive into a career that you know they're they're either passionate about or they think they want to dabble in and and for you and I we we are some of our first initial you know experience in the sports industry was in in sales selling tickets for the coyotes and i know i think you had some experience a little bit and before that and i i did as well but nothing in with an official like professional team like that and yeah um, now you're working for the colorado avalanche so let me just ask you how your experience with the avalanche is going and, and how you're liking you know your your first few years in sports sales yeah uh good question i mean i i've really enjoyed it i've i, I mean i've loved it um i got a job here from the Arizona Coyotes um, when we were down in Phoenix. And I think a big part of me for any time I'm interviewing with a job, I mean, the people I'm interviewing with is just as 
much important as the, you know, ins and outs of my job and what I'll be doing. And, and from the get go, when I was interviewing with my then manager and some other people, I just instantly felt a connection with the people that I was um, going to be working with. And that was a really big part of it. And when I got to Denver, um, it was, I mean, just more of the same. I mean, it was just an amazing um, it still is, but obviously COVID has kind of taken a bite out of it, but yeah, um, just fantastic culture. The people I work with, you know, I think Colorado's Proc- treating you well. Yeah. Colorado's treating me really well. Uh, I mean, it's just a phenomenal city. It's a really fun uh, work environment. I think when you work in sports too, and you know, this is just, you know, you, you can't take yourself too seriously. You know, you can really work hard at your job, but I think it's important to, to understand and take a step back that what you do is pretty cool. And the people that you're selling or the, your clients, so to speak, are buying something they don't need to buy. Um, yeah. And it's a really um, exciting industry to be in. And I think if you can hit the jackpot on a good culture, which I think I did, um, then it's just a win-win and, it, and, it's, and it's hard to leave a place like that. Well, I think that there are two really important things when you get into sales. Um, yeah. Because one is you really want to enjoy what you're selling. Like Mm -hmm. for me, like uh, that was easily the best part about, you know, dabbling in the sports sales ticket, ticket sales industry, because uh, I enjoyed going to the coyotes games and like, that was cool. You know, selling tickets to a hot professional hockey teams. Like those are good games to go to regardless of what your team's success. I mean, it helps that the the avalanche are a better team than the coyotes in general, but yeah, um, we don't need to bring stats into this. But I mean, that's, that's important. Cause if you, if you enjoy what you're selling, if you personally like find value in what you're trying to promote to other people, that helps. I'll, I mean, especially with the efforts of, you know, trying to seem convincing with what you're, what you're trying to promote and what you're trying to market to your clients and stuff like that. But I also think that another important aspect of a sales industry, sales department is the culture. And what, like you said, sports culture, like those sales departments are different than than a, a typical sales department you'll see um in just in any other industry any any other industry besides sports really because i just think everybody has that shared interest of they're there because they love sports and they love this team and, and they enjoy like you know going to games and helping people experience that but it's also like it, it makes it more enjoyable to show up to work when everybody has you know a like interest trying to ultimately comes down to the success of the team the organization you what whether mm-hmm. the team makes whether the t- organization makes money whether or not you're selling out games whether pe- if people are enjoying the games the avalanche games you know that's the ultimate goal and everybody in the avalanche's offices and the coyotes office when we were there like and everybody's trying to function towards that purpose it makes it more enjoyable to be there yeah no i i totally agree um i think a you have to enjoy um you know the, the product you're selling of course which is sports at the end of the day whether it's baseball football or hockey it's it's super exciting to be i know you know through the thick of the season you can sort of um sigh at the thought of like working every single game but i yeah. I, I truly do enjoy it um and like practice you are like like practice in the office or whatever you do in the office i think kind of a weird payoff is working the games and just being able to meet my clients and interact with them but i think you have to have an inherent um want to work with people too you know it's not totally. just sports and everything i think especially in ticketing sales is just the ability to connect with people and to build off relationships. And if you have that and you really enjoy sports as a whole, I think um, that's going to get you really far. Cause I think when you interview for these jobs, you know, I think the cliche line that they always kind of roll their eyes at is, Oh, I really love sports. Right. And, and <laughs> you sort of have to get that one out of the way. But I think what they want to hear too is, is your willingness to learn. I think it's really tough to get, so much experience in ticketing sales in college totally. because they don't they won't pay you for it um uh, but just the willingness to learn the, the willingness to ask questions and um they know they're not you know, they're not hiring a finished product so you know the quicker you can make that known but just letting them know you'll hit the ground running is um yeah. you know going to pay off dividends in the end so that's totally true like organizations don't want to hear that the people that they're hiring are sports fans or like at least like that's not the number one that's for sure not the number one reason why some uh candidate should say that they want to work for right. this team protective team like that's the like if you say that you will you will not you have a longer much longer interview like that will be kind of you know the end of you when you're if you're, if yeah. you're interviewing I, for a team or something like that you don't want to be a fan you right you know, I think I think you could say, and if I ever said it, I would always sort of frame it in a way of, look, I love sports, but that's not why you should hire me. You should hire me because exactly. I know what sports fans are, and I want to instill that passion into other people and to be able yeah. to present you understand, the coyotes. You understand the other side of it. 
Right, right. I want to be able to sell that value to them, whether that's for business or personal and being able to build off that. So you can love sports, but you know, it's, you should hire me because I understand what a sports fan is. And I, you know, it, I want to interact with them and, and uh, you know, grow your business as much as possible. Is the, is the culture with Colorado Avalanche is, is a little bit different than what you had out here with the, uh, the coyotes it's hockey yeah, I, in the desert out here. So it's out there. I mean, you got snow the other day, right? Or you got snow last night or something. It's like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it, it, it is different. I think obviously it just depends on the position too. I think, you know, we were inside sales um, in Arizona and my, I, got a promotion here. And, um, I think the more stable you are and the more, you know, your job doesn't have an expiration date, like it did with being inside sales, you ease into it a lot more. So I think even inside sales reps with the avalanche would, you know, probably tell you like, Hey, like it's fun. I like it, but I, I do want a job and you're kind of on your toes. But, um, I, I just think it's what's so great about here at the abs is everyone is from every corner of the country. It's not just Denver kids. It's not just, you know, local Colorado That's Springs, cool. Colorado state graduates, CU graduates. I mean, we really do come from all over. And I think anytime someone joins, everyone can appreciate that. Um, you know, if they're coming from a different, you know, part of the country. So that's what makes it really cool too, is every walk of life works with us. It's um, always important. Yeah. And when weeks get long, you know, I think the, the, the better people you work with, I mean, the more worth it, it makes. So, um, totally. I mean, I can wholeheartedly say, you know, before COVID just because I couldn't walk to work during COVID, but I never walked into work thinking this sucks. Like I was truly happy to start my day and to be there um, because the people I work with, whether it's clients, but also the people I, I'm surrounded by uh, with my coworkers. How, how did COVID and the pandemic affect sports sales and, and your industry? Like I'm sure you're, yeah. you're, I'm sure your office, I mean, every team in every sports sales office, I'm sure had to operate somewhat differently, but also somewhat the same. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, this up, up, not only is the, uh, there's a situation with going to the office and the unsafetyness of, you know, a potential disease, disease spreading around the office, but you yeah. guys inherently are selling on something that isn't, you don't know when it was going to come back. You didn't know what the schedule was going to look like. Everything was really up in the air for a lot of sports teams and their ticket sales departments. What was that like for you guys? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really tough. I mean, obviously we are the NHL schedule and the NBA schedule align. Um, so, you know, the nuggets who is owned by Cronky sports and entertainment, they're just a floor below us. You know, we were all pretty much in the same boat. And I think, you know, baseball and football, maybe they were impacted a little bit differently just in regards to, well, baseball season was just about to start. So they probably got, you know, a terrible brunt of it. You know, yeah. at least we were 85% through our schedule. So yeah. fans had a, you know, witness it. If you were a terrible team in the MLB <laughs> yeah. or your fans weren't about to see a game for another year and yeah. football, obviously they had some time to, I think kind of cool the jets, but not even, you know, even if it was a different sport, it's not as if the fans of that particular sport were going through anything differently. I mean, COVID impacted totally. everybody and it really did hurt us. I mean, it, it, <laughs> I mean, I think the toughest thing is, you know, we're so used to getting answers so quick and we're so used to providing answers to clients and season ticket members so quick. And with this, A, you couldn't see it. We couldn't see COVID. We didn't know what was coming. It wasn't a, um, in a, a strike within the league or anything. Um, it's not like our commissioner could could say, okay, right, we're going to back. You know, you're, the, the, or the ladder of who you're trying to hear from is pretty high. <laughs> it's you know? like the CDC. Like. Right. It's, it's health organizations. Yeah. And that was really tough. And it was really tough because a large part of my job is retaining money so there's a big sales aspect, but there's also a large retention aspect. So yeah, I sort of took my sales hat, hat off at that time. I mean, I'm trying to sell you to keep your money with us, but it was a large uh, retention aspect of trying to, uh, you know, get people to understand where answers are coming from, where we're at. You know, it's not to say that, hey, the world isn't on fire right now. I'm not saying it's not. I know it's a really tough time, um, but let's not do anything so permanent right now that it makes it harder later on to reverse. Totally. Um, and I think what's really tough with that is you're get, you're hearing a lot of people say, you know, like really big life problems, right? Like loss of job, whether it's their mm -hmm. spouse, whether it's their, you know, kids had to take them out of school or, or severe, severe illness, right? It was a pandemic. And those are things that as much as you want to, you know, think for the company and, and say, Hey, like hang in there with us. You're it, a human, it's also like, know? Hey, you know what? Like <laughs> I totally get it. And I, like, here, here's your money. You know, um, because I think at the same time, you can't build a relationship with these people over the course of a year, which I did, and then tell them right in their face that I, you know, yeah. hey, come on, 
lost job. Like, you <laughs> right, get over excuse. it. You know, like, come right, on. Right. Av- the abs are, they're dependent on you. Like, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. We, we need three, section 310 to be loud in 2021. Um, so that, so that players was are really banking on, on having you there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I had two extra comps with your name on it. Yeah. So, um, so that was obviously really tough. And I think that was certainly a battle. And it, and it really was for a year. It kind of felt like a year long renewal period of keeping people on. Totally. Uh, you know, but I, I do think a lot of people are starting to come back now. And I think a large testament to that is how we handled it a year ago because we weren't, um, you know, refusing. That's like a great, That's a great point. Yeah. You know, I, I think that they understood that like we weren't, you know, holding on to money for dear I'm sure life. Some teams were who I'm sure there were a lot of different organizations that were less graceful with, you know, the handling of the whole thing. And I'm sure that it, that yeah. impacts their, their, their rollback, you know, and when things yeah. are starting to come back. Well, and I think it, you know, like we just said, I think it just comes back to who's making these decisions. And, you know, I think we all knew it was inevitable that the, we had eight games that were essentially canceled um, towards the end of the season. Yeah. I think we all knew that they weren't going to come back. And if they did, they weren't going to come back in a, a you know, an, a, an arena atmosphere or a full one at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so like we knew that. And I think if you took a poll from my clients, they'd probably vote that we probably waited too long. But what we were waiting for was the NHL to say, we're not having it. You know, we need the final word before yeah. we start moving money around because it can create chaos on our end. If they come back and say, we yeah, are imagine. having fans, you know, and then it just That'd becomes be crazy insane. ping pong match. That would be insane. Yeah, that's a that'd be a worst case scenario. Um, yeah. All right, two more questions for you on on the avalanche. Yeah. One, give me your, your favorite food spot or your favorite two food spots out there in, in Denver. Okay. And then and then also give me a tip for um, one tip for a college student or a recent college graduate interested in possibly working in sports and considering that, like we said, that first very first common first step into the sales industry. Yeah. Favorite food spot. So I love Vietnamese food. That's my favorite food. Oh uh, yeah. So the, I would say, pho. yeah, I love pho and I call it pho. So I'm not, yeah, just to <laughs> piss people off, but, yeah. uh, but no, there's a pho spot. <laughs> the Korean pho spot. I'll, I'll the say, Vietnamese people will spit your, in your pho. <laughs> yeah. I'll say for the, uh, for the sake of the uh, podcast, but, uh, one of my favorite pho spots, God, that hurt. Um, <laughs> but near my first apartment when I moved here in 2019, and it's called What the Pho. And I thought, well, that's that's going to get me through the door. And then it turned out <laughs> to be some of the best pho I've ever had. So nice. uh, that's my favorite spot. So if anyone's listening. Um, and then I would say advice for anyone that's wanting to get into sports, whether it's sales or marketing or wherever, I think a big part of it is just to take advantage of your free time as much as possible. So namely summers, well said. Uh, you know, whether it's sports, sh- sports shadowing some or shadowing someone throughout the school year, whatever experiences you can get and whatever experiences you can stack up, I think the better, um, because I think it just shows selflessness. You, you know, if you're not even being paid for it, I had an internship going into my senior year, didn't pay in St. Louis. I still moved down there. I got a second job and I'm not saying everyone should do that. I'm just saying, I was willing to, you know, say, I, I don't care. It's not going to pay me because I know thinking long term, this is going to pay off, you know, coming out of college. And I took as much advantage as I could in my free time. So I think that would be my biggest piece of advice. I don't, you know, not every school has a sports management major, so you can't control that. I certainly did not. So I think I took that opportunity to, um, you know, branch out as much as I could. And I got declined by so many internships, but I was fortunate enough to find um, a few during both my sophomore and junior summer and it really paid off. Totally. They're they're also like an aspect of a lot of people trying to get into sports after college is a lot of college athletes who were not able to get Mm -hmm. the the experiences like, because that's like a major problem with athletes, like trying to get into the industry where yeah. they spent all their all their time on their sport and then they graduate and they have no work experience. And the, and these and p- potential employers are like, well, where's, where's your experience? Well, I spent the last four years, you know, dedicated right, to my sport. So, I mean, taking care of, I mean, taking advantage of any free time you have to, you know, gather an internship, whether it's a paid or unpaid sometimes, especially in like, when you're in school is super beneficial for whatever, you, whatever you're trying to get into in general, yeah, really. And- and the last thing I'll say is just don't, I think people, when they want to get into this industry, they get turned off or they want the sexy team and they want the sexy brand. And I totally get it. I think we all do, but be willing and have the the pride, you know, swallow your pride essentially, right? Like yeah. be willing to work for a team that's a minor league baseball team. Who cares? You know, like when you go into job interviews after college, be able, to like, 
Yeah. I mean, like be able to craft what you did there and why it would help you get your job there. Because I don't think they view it as, oh, he worked for the Red yeah. Sox and this guy had a double, you know, a, a, yeah. you know, worked for a double A team. I, I don't think they weigh like that. I think they want to talk to, they want to talk to people who bring value. Right? They want people yeah. who bring value to the organization. Exactly. And, and I, you gotta, I think you got to find ways gonna, to exhibit that. Right. They're not going to hire on paper. They want to talk to you. Right. And they want to yeah. hear about your experience. Whereas the kid at the Red Sox probably slacked off because he, you know, knew he was working for the Red Sox. Well, the kid in the double A sounds pretty damn passionate about sports. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. And uh, you're, you're, you're doing a great job. I, I like your, your, your path so far going from the Coyotes to the Avalanche. You're moving up to a better team, a better city probably. And yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, Phoenix is a good, Phoenix is a good time. Love um, and miss Phoenix. Yeah, I, I'm here now. My um, my my fiance, our wedding is in a couple weeks. We're moving in permanently to the Tempe area, so it's been it's been chaotic. Uh, Late for- congrats on your engagement. Early congrats on your wedding. <laughs> no, well, thank you, uh, Bruce. Let's go into what we wanted to talk about with with you in college, because college sports and, and your alma mater, specifically University of Nebraska, are very important to you, um, and you're very passionate about. Clearly, anybody who really knows Bruce really knows that he has he has a soft spot for University of Nebraska and for college sports. So, two very important things to him in his life. And so, tell me, like, you have an exuberant amount of passion for your alma mater. What was uh, University of Nebraska like, and, and what were your favorite parts about going there specifically in for your undergrad studies? Yeah. Uh, so, for anyone li- anyone listening or anyone who does listen has never probably been to Nebraska, uh, but I'm from <laughs> Lincoln, which is the state capital, and that's um, where the university is itself. So, I, I had a wonderful experience. Um, met a lot of just really good friends, and obviously, and even though I've moved around a few times out of college, just you know, some of my best friends, I still maintain really good relationships from Nebraska. So, um, I think there's a really big community feel at Nebraska. Um, there's a lot of people that go there that aren't just from Omaha or Lincoln. There's a lot of people that go there from small towns. Um, and I think it's very generation. It's a big generational school too, you know? So it's like my dad went there, my grandpa went there and, and that actually, yeah, that my dad did go there and my grandpa did go there. So I had a lot of family. Um, so, I mean, it, it was a wonderful time. I mean, obviously, you know, athletics, I think if you can make it a big part of your college career. And I certainly did um, in terms of like attending all the games and just being a sports nut. So it was awesome from that aspect. But um, I was lucky enough to surround myself with some really awesome people and uh, both in the college that I studied with. And I was also in a fraternity and, and really enjoyed that as well. So Nebraska is an, uh, and I, I drove to Nebraska once. And so I don't, it's not like I'm becoming some sort of expert on the state or yeah. anything, but I enjoyed my, my one drive through. I mean, obviously it's, it's a lot of cornfields. Like, it's not an over exaggeration when like, yeah. I mean, what is it like eight? It's got to be like ninety percent cornfields, the land. Yeah, it's, I mean, you probably loved it because you were in the passenger seat <laughs> and you retired. No, I was driving, so I was oh, going like you're able to go like nine. It has like some of the fastest speed limits. I think there's yeah, there's eighty mile per hour speed limits in Nebraska, so it's you like, can like you yeah. can fly. And, it's like uh, seventy five, but like wink, wink, like just keep <laughs> just keep going. Yeah, and we stayed a night in Omaha. Omaha was a nice little town. I liked it. Yeah. Omaha is a nice city. It's about a million. I mean, it's, you know, they, we always have a joke in Nebraska that Omaha people, you know, will just beat their chest to no (laughs) living ends and Lincoln people like we're just hands in our lap. Like we're fine. Like we know we are. And and Omaha people just love, um, I don't know, I guess I, I didn't know they were New York city of the West, but (laughs) that's funny. There's a little bit of rivalry there. Yeah, but I mean, we win. So I mean, I don't really know how that works as a rivalry, but no, they're, they're a fun little brother. But what what were your favorite sports at University of Nebraska? Yeah, I mean, obviously football's king. Uh, loved football. I, I, Who'd you see that uh, when you were there? Did you see any like uh, guys who are in the league now? Yeah. Yeah, we played Miami my freshman year at home. Um, that was a really fun game, um, and we won that. And Nebraska and Miami have a pretty steep rivalry, actually, um, just from meeting each other in, like, the postseason for years. Um, but, yeah, we saw Miami come play. I mean, the Big Ten is so much fun because you're seeing so many of these elite schools come play all the time. And Do you remember, do you remember seeing any guys that went ended up playing in, now in the NFL? Yeah, uh, like on Nebraska. Yeah, um, Randy Gregory uh, was a really good player my freshman year. He's a defensive tackle. Malik Collins is a defensive tackle for the Raiders. Uh, Amir Abdullah was there. Nate Gary, who starts for the Eagles, um, he was a really good player. A lot of defensive guys, as, as you can imagine. But um, Quincy Nunwa, who starts for my Jets, started for my Jets. Um, he played there and was able to watch him for a few years. So yeah, I mean, it was awesome seeing 
a lot of really good talent, um, especially in the trenches too, but a lot of good skill players too. So, yeah, that's where they, that's, that's where they're known to, you know, breed them, breed them good out there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's great too, because, you know, you have Ohio state come in and you have Michigan come in and you have Wisconsin come in mm. and you're seeing so much talent and, you know, like it is with the PAC 12, but it's great to watch guys, you know, come in and play at Nebraska, whether it's a road game and watch them on Sundays and be like, Oh yeah, I was pretty drunk and watched them at Nebraska <laughs> when they came here. So were you a big Nebraska fan growing up? Like, is that where your main passion f- for the college sports like comes from your 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 grandfather and your father like root, yeah. root for the the school and yeah you know, you I mean, joining in you you really are a fan by default when you move there or when you live there um and you're born there and yeah of course like my parents growing up and I remember like when I was younger my parents really wouldn't like say oh we got to watch Bruce like so you guys can have our tickets no 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 they would like drop me off somewhere like a daycare still go to the game tailgate and everything so yeah I mean growing up and like I was lucky enough to you know be living in Lincoln so I could go to games whether it was middle school or high school and just got to see some really I mean like Indomitian and Sue I grew up watching really cool um you know just so many good players and that was huge. I mean, so just being in the stadium, I go back now and it's so nostalgic, not from a college standpoint, just, but just like sitting here with my mom and my dad and everything. And, and it's really cool. And it actually, and I'll end it on this. It's one kind of funny fact of how small Nebraska is. And that's that when Memorial stadium is full and I believe it's about 93,000, it becomes the third largest city in Nebraska. <laughs> really? Lincoln and Omaha. It sits that many? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And, I mean, it sits a lot, but it just goes to show how small it is. So that's wild. Um, give me your, your best college victory and your worst college defeat. Like give me in your childhood, you could be when you were going there, when you, you know, in your, in your childhood, give me yeah. like your best, your best college sports memory and your worst college sports memory. Oh man. I think <laughs> it was probably against, the same team. This was back in the big 12 days uh, playing Missouri. I'll start with the bad because I just want to get out of the way. Uh, Do you remember Chase Daniel? Yes. In Missouri, Jeremy Macklin, Chase Coughlin. We played him at home and it was like, Oh, it was terrible. It was like a 9 PM kick in Nebraska. So games over like 1145, 12 (laughs) or whatever. And you know, where my seats are, where my parents seats are, it's really close to the opposing section in the South stadium. So you see all this black and gold. I think they were ranked like fourth come in and they just beat the piss out of us. It was like 52, <laughs> 17, like oh. I'm yawning in the third quarter. Cause I'm tired of the game and I'm tired. Cause it's like 2 AM in New York. And cause how late it was. And that was just a terrible memory because it was just, you lost my 35 to a team that we just can historically pound. So that was terrible. Um, I think we lost a, my senior year in college, actually, we lost Northern Illinois on a really bleak Saturday. It was like 17, 14. Um, and we, and we fired that coach that year. Uh, clearly, but <laughs> That's a my, brutal loss. Yeah. My, uh, and that, yeah, it was like two pick sixes. It was like 17, 14 was the final <laughs> loss. So it's like, they scored off just terrible <laughs> reads. Um, my best memory was when we played Missouri in 2010 and I was able to see the, um, rushing record at Nebraska broke, uh, by Roy Halu, who was our running back, um, back then. And didn't we he have long running- hair? Did he have long hair? Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep, exactly. And we were ranked, and that was Taylor Martinez his freshman year, who was a really electric quarterback. Or Taylor, Mar- yeah, Taylor Martinez, not Adrian. Um, and we were ranked, I want to say 10th, and Missouri was 6th. And we beat him by like three touchdowns or two touchdowns. And But just seeing the rushing record, and, and I think – with that, my worst memory being so fresh off the, the press two years prior <laughs> and seeing that, that was really cool. So nice. Yeah. I, at least like your worst loss, like I, you get blown out. I mean, the whole game you're, you're bummed. I mean, yeah. it depends. Like, cause for me, my worst loss is the USC, the USC Texas Rose bowl. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was with Vince yep. Young, just literally beating the USC Trojans single-handedly. Like that was, I mean, USC, they were, they had the game the whole way and Vince Young literally just snatched it out of the jaws of defeat. Like, oh, it was, I know. That, and that was insane. Was just, that was just such like a celebrity game. It felt like, you know, yeah. like Matt Liner and Reggie Bush felt more famous than certain actors in Hollywood, yeah. you know? So, yeah. but it was certainly a Hollywood ending. Yeah. I, for me, I was a big college football fan growing up just because I was a big Trojans fan, but now the Trojans are, you know, they're okay, but you know, they're not the, the team they were when Pete Carroll was, you know, made it a, made it an empire really. Yeah. And um, it's, it now it's just, it's all about the SEC now. It's just like, 
it's mm. college football is just it's it's the same teams every year nowadays and i guess that I mean that, that could be good for sports but could also be bad for sports in different ways but it is yeah. it is what it is i mean for one really cool thing that, that recently happened though in college sports was the the march madness tournament so i mean like last year it's if it, this year's tournament felt weird because it had been so long since we yeah. had experienced it it felt like it was you know years since we had experienced a March Madness tournament. And it, while, you know, the first round was really good and then kind of the final four, the UCLA run, and then, you know, some of the stuff that they were able to accomplish in Loyola Chicago and some of the, the big upsets, but there was generally, I would say a lack of excitement, but it was just a general, you know, a general, you know, feeling of uh, relief that we fought, we were able to get through it. You know, there was a, really the only one COVID scare with Oregon in the first round. But yeah. you know that that could have been way worse too. So I don't know. What do you think about the tournament? Because I, I was just happy that I was able to you know have it. Yeah, you know I think it was yeah it was so awesome that we had it, and I think there's such a I've just grown a such an appreciation for all these sports leagues, NCAA included, that they get this stuff done and they don't really look at it in the face of we can't do it. Let's, you know, not why not, but like why. And I think just putting on an NCAA tournament in a bubble and as much as like I miss fans in the stands, I know so many man hours go into doing and putting that on. So, you know, I, when the NHL finished the bubble and, and, you know, NF, NFL completed a season and NBA and same with the NCAA tournament, I, my first thought truly was I'm just so glad they got it done. And, and just the idea of like putting their minds together and, and get it. Cause we almost came to expect it. Like, Oh, it's going to work. You know right. what I mean? We've seen it a few times, but uh, you know, there's 64 teams in, you yeah. know, in a, in a span of a city. So, you know, I, I thought it was fine. I think also, you know, not having it full of fans kind of stinks. And I think the fun yeah. part about watching March madness is knowing the regions are all yeah. spread out. I and- wonder, I mean, having fans in the stands, I feel like matters even more in amateur college athletics than it does in yeah. in professional sports. Cause I mean, the pros work their asses off and like, that's their career where, you know, their performance is very le- a little bit less game to game than a collegiate athletes does. I mean, the fans can really make a difference for a college athlete, like the energy that oh, they, they can, can provide. And like, it means a little bit more, I think in those, in those games. It does. It does. And I think what separates March Madness is you're watching so many, especially if you see teams like 15 seeds or 14 seeds advance, you're seeing guys play their like last games. Like you're not going to watch these guys play in the NBA, you know, for a lot of these teams, and a lot of these smaller schools. So seeing them advance, like it's, that's like the peak of their career right then and there. Right. Yeah. Um, and in sports, it's like, okay, well the heat will be back next year. You know, like I'm going to watch Tyler hero play next year, but that's what makes March Madness so great is not because you know, Baylor and Gonzaga lined up in the final four and I was really excited for that matchup, but it was just fun to see, you know, smaller schools, you know, get back to that. Um, and even if it was still in Indianapolis, but yeah, I mean, like you said, fans and collegiate sports mean so much because you're counting on 21 year old kids to like play out of their mind. And that's really tough. You know, even if you're a very mature 21 year old, one game, like, right, right. It's totally understandable that like some of the best teams lose to some team you never heard of because it's like, it's one game. And they're, yeah, exactly. they're like, oh, most of them are like not even 20 years old. No. And even if it's like, oh, they're a very senior heavy team. They're like 21. They're 22. Right. That's so, extremely yeah. young, you know, and yeah. I've been to a few NCAA tournament games where it's the lower seed is, you know, winning or beating, um, you know, the higher seed. And, you know, there's always a game afterwards, right. In the early rounds. So all the fans in the stands are made up of the two teams playing and then the other fans from the other game coming in and everybody will rally around the lower seat, you know, like the 15 yeah. seat, you know? So like, it does make a difference. Like if Duke is the two seat and they're playing yeah. the 15 seat, you have, it is unanimously, you know, fans for the 15 seat. And that's what, what it, I you know what would be pretty funny is if they keep the bubble format, and, yeah. but just like allow fans from like other schools to travel there where you yeah. have, so you have like, all, like you have 64 different fan bases, oh, you know, all, <laughs> that would be, that would, that would probably cause some, some chaos. Yeah. That city would make <laughs> a crap ton of money, but yeah, that would yeah. be, I'm sure whoever hosted it would not be uh, opposed. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Dude. I like, I, I just, I love when fans are able to will their team or the will their players to, you know, a performance that is probably, probably beyond their skill set or their abilities. Mm-hmm. Normally, you know, it, can, yeah. it helps with the energy. Like, like this year, like that guy, Cameron Crutwig, the, 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 the big guy with the mustache look like who, uh, from Loyola Chicago. Loyola Chicago yeah. Yeah. 
And, dude, he would have been a, a legend with if there were fans. Oh. If there were more fans there, they would have gone crazy for a guy like that. I mean, those types of players were like, "That guy's not going to be the NBA," but yeah. he's, he would be a fan favorite. Like we miss out on some of those experiences with. Yeah, you know, I actually had a few friends go to uh, their Creighton fans. Creighton's out of Omaha, and they went to the game against uh, Gonzaga and North Texas. Okay, and they just said it was so strange, but yet being inside Hinkle Fieldhouse, Butler's Arena or Stadium was just really cool because it was kind of like basketball royalty in a sense because it's such an old arena it doesn't have a single digital ad at all oh, it's really? just you know that's cool it's just so it's wooden i think they fell down you know <laughs> uh, and they said just being there was just so cool and and uh yeah i think players you ask any players too you know to, for the nhl arizona the coyotes had fans this year and you talk to any of the players are like, yeah, we want to go play at Arizona because we want to hear people. We don't care if they're yeah. cheering against us. Like we just want to hear <laughs> voices in the crowd. Yeah. It's kind of neat to see it come back in baseball. Cause I mean, really fans were just so ready to go back to sporting events that even like, I know like the teams in Texas are allowing full capacity, which is crazy, but yeah. I mean, even like the 25% capacity stadiums, like still like the fans were so eager to get back that the 25% are, are sounding like, you know, almost 75%, 80% yeah. capacity where they're right. just like, they're, they're the most loyal, dedicated, eager fans that are, you know, attending the games now. And it's going to yeah. make for you know a more enjoyable experience. I would say both, you know, in, in person and on TV, I think too. Yeah. No, I, you couldn't have said it better. It's awesome. Yeah. The, uh, I, did the coyotes have fans, but this is the, when did they, they had they had fans starting this last year, right? So starting at the, yeah, at the season, they okay. Did. I actually went down for the Avs um, Coyotes game in March, so it was awesome. Nice. Um, it was like my first live sporting. I mean, yeah, like a year. Um, and I was willing to. Dude, buy I'm, I have not. I have yet to attend a sporting event so far. And I've I've been meaning to to get to it, but like I said, just with the wedding and you know going back yeah. and forth between Phoenix and and Los Angeles, I've just been way too busy, and I'm I'm jealous for the for my friends that have been able to attend some sporting some sporting games i'm just like i'm so ready to get back you know i got I know. clipper i got clipper season tickets for next season i'm stoked about you know we're well, you talking do. about yeah we were talking about That's um awesome. how some people are coming back and your a lot of your job was retention for you know working in sales during the pandemic i placed yeah. a, i placed a deposit like right when the pandemic kind of started to take place yeah. for season tickets and they just like held my 200 dollars deposit or whatever for you know a, a full year basically until full pandemic yeah, yeah. A, full, a full pandemic you know and, <laughs> and uh i was able to finally like reserve seats for next year i'll get a, i'm gonna get half season tickets so like oh, 22 good. games gonna basically sell the laker game resell the laker game and make my money back because yeah, make your money back the lakers are like i mean literally like jacked up prices 500 percent for laker games oh, in los angeles it's- yeah, it's ridiculous. You can really point to yeah, three or four teams, and it's like if I get rid of just one of these, like it, it was worth it. Literally yeah, worth it. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, our, especially with that game specifically, we have good seats, and so like we're only like ten rows back from behind the hoop, I think, or something like that. And so oh. a, a Laker game is going to be you know two to three thousand a seat. I, I figure, you know. I think you just found out how you funded your honeymoon. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Right there, um, Bruce. One of my favorite things about your what you were telling me when you were at Nebraska was your podcasting experience. So I, I it, just in our conversation, people who don't know Bruce, like Bruce ha- naturally, it, sales is perfect for him because he's a very excellent people person. He strikes up conversations in the most quirky ways. Like he'll he'll say something and you, and you have to double take yourself when you look at Bruce because you'd be like, did you say that? I was so clever. Like that was like, where did, how did he come up with that so fast? Like he's very quick witted. And uh, it's really neat to see Bruce in action when, you know, he's on like a, he's really, you know, focused in on conversation because he does have, excellent sales skills because he's very charismatic and very, uh, I don't know, involved with the people he talks to. And those skills also attribute to successful podcasting. And so I'm curious, like how, how was your podcasting experience? Like what'd you talk about? Like what, what, what'd you, like, what were you good at with it? What'd you guys do? Yeah. Um, no, I appreciate it. We, so I actually had about th- three different podcasts throughout college. My freshman year, I didn't even study broadcasting. I just, what was so great, and I'm sure your school did this too, is they were really uh, like, just go for it, you know? And we were able to take advantage of some really nice podcasting equipment at Nebraska and they had the studios and you could really just 
go after it. And you could, I mean, they provided you everything awesome. if you really wanted to go for it. And you didn't have to study broadcasting. You did have to be in the journalism school, but you didn't have to study broadcasting. Um, and that first year I had a podcast with a friend. He wasn't a big sports guy. So, but we, I was like, well, I am, but like, let's still talk about just stupid sports. So we would talk about like women's bowling and there was like, a, <laughs> there were like local leagues in Lincoln and we would awesome. always dissect the so scores. Awesome. Um, and we would always, and we called it over under because we would also discuss like sports lines. Um, but we'd always preface it by saying, now this isn't legal. So don't take our advice on this, but this is how many runs are going to be scored tonight in the Mets Braves game. Um, and we would just talk about little stuff like that. Um, and then my next, the next podcast, I guess it was the same show. I just had different co-hosts and I called it water cooler talk. Um, and it was just a stupid, you know, like just water cooler talk, just Great banter. segment names. Yeah. Yeah. Just banter that you have, you know, with the coworker at the <laughs> uh, next, yeah. uh, at the next day. Self-explanatory. Right. Right. And we really, you know, it was both my junior and senior year and it was such a blast. Uh, and the people I recruited to, to do it with me the first year was kind of very trial and error and stuff. And it was still fun. And then my senior year, I was like, I'm kind of serious about this. I'm not like, I'm not going to take it too seriously, but I am serious about growing it and seeing how far we can get with because it. It's fun. It's, it's fun. So fun. And I, I, yeah. You know, it, it's great to like, just turn on the mic and be like, yeah, let's do that. But like, if you actually do put somewhat organization into it and you can actually, and you want to see the podcast grow, or excuse me, podcast grow because at the end of the day, you want it to reach as many people as it can. Yeah. Um, in my I, scene, I really love how different podcast to podcast like it could get. Like, you, right, it depends on what you're talking about, who you're talking about with. Like, that's just really fun. It's it's really fun to just have conversations about all the different topics that you are particularly interested in, or somewhat interested in, or tangentially interested in. Like, yeah, it, it, it's just fun to have conversations with with friends oh. and people you relate it, to it's so much fun and basically the layout of our show is this it was like the first half hour was just stuff we read crazy headlines weird stuff in the news whether it was sports yeah. whether it was just what's going on with florida or you know whatever <laughs> florida man uh, does what's what it was what was florida man up to <laughs> yeah yeah i mean who got who got eaten by another human? um and then the, and then the last half hour to, to 40 minutes we always had a guest like we always had a guest and we always had an athlete guest um, and we cool. were able to just get some like really cool guests and throughout my years in college, like just developing contacts with, uh, players on teams, it was really easy to get athletes on the show. Um, and, and who's your favorite, what we who's your favorite was, athlete guest? Um, I would say it was so my, during my senior year of college, we had like three basketball players on and Nebraska was really good at basketball that year. So it was a really grabby, like, Oh, we got to listen to this. Cause you know, these three guys are on and we would treat these guys like absolute human beings. I mean, they yeah. have press conferences every day. Right. So we yeah. weren't throwing them nuts here. and bolts. Right. And we weren't throwing them like nuts and bolts questions. We were asking them like, like, is this girlfriend hot? Like, <laughs> tell us, you know, yeah. and like say it right now. And, you know, and just got your head. Like, <laughs> right. Right. And just stupid stuff like that. And people got a kick out of it. And so did the athletes. I mean, it got to the point where, you know, the athletes would, other athletes would hear them on the show and they'd be like, Hey, I want to get on that show. You know, it's yeah. really fun. And there was a, I'm sure you're familiar with Barstool, obviously. Um, and every campus has like a Barstool, Iowa, Barstool Huskers. And with our Barstool Huskers, there was about 32,000 Twitter followers. Well, we like quote unquote partnered with them and it was like the official nice. podcast of them. So, you know, they promoted the hell out of the show. They would always retweet it. Um, we had a graphics guy and, you know, if we had funny quotes um, from the athlete or, you know, an interaction with me or any of my uh, co-hosts, they would always promote that. So just That's talking about, cool. you know, I, I've had like NFL guys on guys that were currently in the NFL that went to Nebraska, guys that were playing at the time that went on to go to the NFL, had an NBA, uh, Isaiah Roby for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He starts for him right now. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and I had him on the show and it was a blast and just treating these guys as, as who they are. Like it's kids interviewing kids at the end of the day. And it, it was just so much fun. And, and you Once know, you, this, like it was just the favorite part of my week and just walking home afterwards and just really know cool. you did a really good job and loading it. And I mean, we would get close to maybe 5,000 listens on some episodes and Nice, some really, really good engagement. And, you know, at first it's not as big as you'd want it to be, but I think just getting those um, small comments from people, I don't even know saying, Hey, really enjoy the show. Like, keep it up. Like that is more than enough to keep going. Do you remember any like particular questions that you got like great responses on? Can you think of any of them? Oh, from like athletes? Yeah. We would, you know, we would just ask some athletes, like, would you rathers? And like, you know, they would just be like <laughs> stupid, like, would you rather do this or shit your pants? And <laughs> you know, the, the boyfriend would be like, 
no, I don't want to shoot my pants, you know, and it's like, he, he's never said that to a microphone <laughs> yeah. in his life, uh, you know, but, or just asking Scott Frost, the coach of Nebraska was hired that year. And, um, I was talking to Stanley Morgan who plays for the Bengals now. He, he doesn't start, but he's on the roster. And we were just talking about Scott Frost. And I was like, I would be honored to get kicked out of the stadium by Scott Frost. And he was like, Dude, so would I, you know, so like little interactions <laughs> like that, um, were just so much fun. And, and obviously seeing those guys in and around campus or downtown, it was really cool. And, um, really cool. you know, just really good guys. And I think it just shows athletes are just like us, you know, especially in college and they're very genuine and authentic. And well, that's what they want. Like, especially the athletes, I think, especially the athletes that eventually go pro or know they're going to go pro. Yeah. Like they want to experience those things in college. Like yeah. that, they want it, that, like unique, that you, those unique things. To, Cause it's like almost like their last, you know, the last hurrah before they become their lives become super calculated and, you know, at least more, more is at stake to them after they, you know, collect that, those first big paychecks. Yeah. I mean, they're constantly, they're constantly watched, you know, and monitored. And it's not to say that they weren't during this time, but it was their ability to just be like, take a breath, man. Like I'm wearing a stupid suit coat, like, yeah. you know, with a Jersey, I'm fat. Like just talk to me, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. Like That's like one of the, that's one of the best things about podcasting. Cause when you have a guest that is, you know, a little bit more calculated or wound up in terms of their public perception, yeah. able, it's awesome when like they kind of let loose a little bit on the podcast and like, you know, start sharing things that they wouldn't normally share on some sort of like, you know, Oprah interview or something on like, right. Ellen DeGeneres like they're not gonna you know talk about you know their their stupid dog or some sort of like experience they had in college or you know anything you know there's yeah, just I mean, there's different things you would discuss on a podcast that it's just it's fun it's interesting to hear and that's one of my favorite things about them right like what are you talking about with your teammates outside in the locker room yeah. right you know like you don't no, need you to say anything incriminating yeah. or anything like that but like just you know and I'm not saying we're your teammates by any means you know when we're talking to these guys but um you know, it, it was you just want to so get a sense of the community of, of right, the team right. community. And it made them really just, yeah, I, I just, and you know, it was just, they created just funny inside jokes and being friends with athletes on teams was really helpful in, in terms of kind of having them say, Hey, like, these are really normal guys. Like this is not a dorky show. And that was a really good, um, uh, connection, you know, and, and using that as kind of a mutual connection. So but would, you ever, would you ever podcast again? God, you know, I, I so would. I love it. Um, I think just, yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I, I certainly would. I think it would have to be kind of a, um, there has to be somewhat of a purpose, not, not, a, you know, an insane purpose, it's but the, the, the editing side is really tough or like, right. if you just have to record, if you like, if you just, you know, you sit down and you, you, if anything, you prepare a little bit for your episodes, what you're going to say, what you're going to talk about, but that, that stuff's like pretty simple. And then when you get into the conversations, you know, it's a conversation and you're, you're right. done, you've had a million of them. You, you enjoy speaking to people. That's what you excel at. But yeah. the, the behind the scenes work is what really is the major commitment to it. You know, that's what's, yeah. that's what's tough. Well, and I think my issue too was like, if I were to do it, I'd want to do it right. And not saying every week, yeah. uh, but I think whenever we recorded a show, I was always the one editing it. And I didn't really mind because I wanted kind of that control over it. You know, whether that's it was, how I am too you know, the intro or not, you know, not the ad read. We actually did kind of partner with a company that like, uh, that are friends of mine that were like a tailgating company that gave away some tickets. So that was really cool. But, um, had interviewed a few guys at Barstool, which was really neat, but just being able to edit that and kind of control that and just the way that I wanted to see it. And I think on our show, like I obviously did take the lead on almost all of it. It was sort of just two friends kind of being there with me and, um, you know, offering some commentary, but, you know, it was kind of my baby and we were, we sold some shirts around campus, which was really fun. Um, and we were able to give away some money to, to charity too. So it was, uh, all in all, I mean, it was such a wonderful experience and I, you know, and I do miss it from time to time. I'll get drunk and tweet from our, our Twitter saying like, Hey, we're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Uh, we're, we're going to have back. a we're gonna episode on Monday at 7 PM. Yeah. On standard check time. Your, Just keep, keep, keep check your in. Board, new episode. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 I desperately want to find some sort of sample. We, I want to have you read some sort of promo, but that'd be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bishop's Talk with Benny P is brought to you by <laughs> Bruce's Living Room, and where he yeah. has lots of cauliflower and broccoli. <laughs> and <it's... laughs> Bruce's Penny Rosa. <laughs> uh, I won't ship it to you. <laughs> yeah, dude, I would love to bring you back on a podcast at some point again. It'd be awesome. It, it, you have a great energy by yourself when, you, when you're when you on these types of things. I think you would yeah, do well. No, I, I see it's, why it's you would do well. 
Yeah, it, it's a blast. And I, you know, I didn't study broadcasting and, and, and by no means am I tooting my own horn, but I just think it sounds, you know, the more genuine and less robotic. And, and, you know, it's, we joke about ad reads and everything, but outside of that, it's like, it feels like when you pause for two seconds, you think you're like ruining, you know what I mean? And it's like, no, yeah. like people are literally just listening to a conversation. It's not, um, you know, as, as structured as you need to make it out to be. People aren't listening for perfection. They're listening for um, authenticity. So Agreed. I agree 100%. All right, Bruce. Well, you're, you're in Colorado. You're working for the Avs. Let's talk a little about some Colorado sports. Yeah. Um, the big topic, if I'm getting me wrong, so the Broncos are the team there, right? I mean, that, that's the team that people – root for more so than the others right yeah i I think the nfl dominates the country almost everywhere okay Uh, broncos are no exception um the brand itself is just so big and i think they're they've had the most recent success for the super bowl obviously but you know you think the broncos and it's john elway it's peyton manning you know it's just they have some really good fans here and i was never a broncos guy i kind of almost disliked them yeah. to an extent. but like after being here it's like they really do ride or die even though yeah. they suck and had like a cornerback playing quarterback last year where, where, yeah. was it you and me selling uh or yes. we were giving away those promos yes. for the coyotes yeah. at the broncos yeah. game yeah yeah they were playing uh yeah they were playing the cardinals <laughs> and you remember how much orange you saw yeah you know? Wait, <laughs> what's what's crazy about it ben is that you know, people from Denver, and I'm sure there's a lot of Broncos fans around there too, but like people had an easier chance living here in Colorado and going to a game down there than they are getting tickets here. Damn, really? It's that scary. Yes. It's tough to get yes. Broncos tickets. It, it, it really is. You got to know a guy or give a foot job. I mean, it really is. <laughs> Who's going to be the Broncos QB next year? It's a great question. It cannot uh, be. It cannot be Drew Lock. It no, cannot be. I, I don't. I don't think it'll be Drew Lock. I think. Drew, I think last year was kind of his his trial, you know, his, uh, that was his, his last chance, right? I know it was. And, you know, it's really unfortunate because the year before he like, he played fine. Cause I think he, he had really moments. Exceeded, he, he, had, well, he exceeded expectations and he didn't even start to begin the year. It was Joe Flacco, if you remember. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the, corp- is, the corpse that is Joe Flacco. <laughs> no kidding. RIP, uh, wherever he is. <laughs> but with Drew Locke, I think what's, you, you can't always put so much stock into a guy that plays for a bad team and, kind of rips off some like three or four last wins. And that's kind of what he was at the end of 2019, 2020, you know, they ended really well. And then I think, you know, this year it kind of became apparent. He was a third round pick, you know, he's a fourth round. pick. So it's not going to be drew Locke. I would say and I'm a jets fan too. So I think it's good. They're going to either trade up and get like a Justin Fields. Um, I really do. Thanks. Justin Fields or a trade. Be, I, I would be happy if I was a Broncos fan and they get, Fields or Lance. I think that'd be a good that'd be a good draft. Absolutely. Especially if they get Justin Fields. Like from a guy that's watched Justin yeah. Fields, like I mean, he, he's like he's got real Cam Newton, Ben Roethlisberger vibes to him. He really does. Yeah. I mean, he's just a winner. He's efficient. Um, and he's a really he's a really quick learner. I mean, the guy's learned two offenses like just like that. He came yeah. in and it's crazy uh, how I mean, really he what has he done to really sour have people sour on him so much where he was the number two he was pres- the presumptive right. number two guy. Like, what did he do wrong? Like, he hasn't. He, if anything, he had a, a a good college season. Like, what? Yes. Why that is he dropping? Question, that question has kept me up for days because it seemed as if NFL nerds like to have projections. All the games are played, and then after that, they just recreate or like, or they have a revisionist history of like Zach Wilson at BYU, and it's like, whoa, yeah. I thought Justin Fields, the guy that just played in the national title and beat Trevor Lawrence, was the number two pick. And now we're just basing guys off in shorts at pro day and saying, yeah. no, Justin Fields is now going to be fourth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like let's talk it. about him sliding even more. It's like, yeah. And like Mac Jones, the emergence, I, I just, I don't understand it. So if the Broncos get him, like, yes, it's an absolute gift. Like count your blessings. I think he's going to be the quarterback next year. I think either Fields or Lance, because I don't think there's going to be, it was going to be Deshaun Watson potentially, but obviously that turned really south. So, uh, cause I think that was going to be the landing spot for him if the Texans ended up trading him. Um, but I think now they're going to go, you know, either Lance or, or Justin Fields. So what about like a Bridgewater trading for Brid- Bridgewater out of Carolina? You know, I mean, that, that that's certainly a possibility. I think, you know, in this draft, there's really nothing next year. So if you can get a guy now, I think you would, um, if it is a Trey Lance or Justin Fields, I think if you have one of those guys, you really do need to go after him. Because the Broncos are kind of a team that people are like, they're like over 50 to one, I think, to win the championship or like the yeah, division I mean, they, or the division t- odds are like not even good at all. Like 
a yeah. really tough division. Like, but they're a team that like people are starting to theorize like they could be a dark horse as like a big a big underdog that you know yeah beats the odds. I mean, their defense is really really good, uh, but they just had poor quarterback play last year, and they got kind of get bitten by the COVID bug too. Bug, I should say, but. Um, no offense, a really good tight end from Omaha um, and also Jared Judy. So I think you have some pieces you can build around there. But yeah. if I were to answer your question right now, I and think Corlin it's going to be Trey Lance or Justin Fields. They'll draft him. Yeah, I like Lance and Fields. I think that one of those two should be should be solid for them. If they, yep. if they could get one of those guys, I think Broncos fans should be happy. All right. Yep. Who, what's your what's your NBA finals prediction? Because I know I know while you're in Colorado, the Nuggets are the hot are the hot team there. The Jamal Murray injury was devastating. I mean, not only do they lose yeah. him for the rest of this year, it's like the rest of the next year too. I mean, those are like 12, 13 to 14 month injuries, the ACLs. And mm-hmm. it, it was not good. It was no. Got an email today from work, said it went well, which is good. So we're we're hoping for the best for Jamal. But yeah, I mean, that was that was a killer. I think, you know, the Nuggets made a pretty um, unconventional move for them when they got Aaron Gordon. Yeah. yeah. Aaron Gordon's like a decent, like he's a, you know, he's not just a role player. That was like one of their better actually, trades they've made in a while. Right. Right. And you kind of include him with Jokic, who's a star and Murray. Jokic is un- incredible. Bonafide. Yeah. So he's my MVP. They, yeah. And they were playing so darn well, but obviously with Jamal Murray, you know, it does go through Jokic, but I mean, Jamal Murray's what makes him kick. That two man, that two man game is, it's right. one of the best in the league, if not the you best in the league. No diss to Monte Morris, but like you just can't replicate what Jamal Murray brings. So yeah. it was a terrible injury. I, I think it sucks because in the NBA, like it's it's not like baseball or, or football where you can really overcome, you know, stars like that. It's a really star driven yeah. league. You get to the NBA, it's very tough to uh I mean LeBron James has played with crap before at with the Cavs, and yet they've gotten there, you know. Yeah. So um, it, it's really tough to it's, if they come together as a team, yeah, especially in the West. You Jokic, know, Jokic would have to win like two games on his own. On for his them own. to yeah. For him, yeah. to, for them to be like, a, maybe they could advance past the first round, but it's a second yeah. round win would be tough. I, I would just say the Lakers, assuming AD and LeBron come back, the Clippers are extremely strong. The Jazz are pretty darn consistent. And the Suns, the emergence of the Suns. So I think yeah. um, that's a really, really tough road. Do you have a uh, prediction? Who do you think is going to go to the finals? I would say, oh man, I would like to think, gosh, the West is so tricky. But it is. Both, I would both say, really. Both I conferences know. so tricky. You know, I really, I really don't trust the Nets. I really think the Sixers get there. If I were to guess, if Ben Simmons comes back, I think that's my dark horse. Yeah. I think people want to say the Nets, and I don't blame them at all. But I just think the lack of defense, and I heard a crazy For stat. For me, it's that, the health. Well, and when they get, yeah, when they get to the playoffs, I think they will only have played at that time seven games together with those big three. Yeah. So, uh, and they kind of have a lot of Walmart furniture. Oh, like nice Walmart furniture, but Walmart, like Blake Griffin <laughs> and DeAndre Jordan, who aren't. Well, Griffin's obviously- actually looked pretty good. DeAndre know, Jordan I mean, is. Griffin, it, Griffin it, kind of played yeah. a little possum. He was like, you can yeah. trade me for a Gatorade cap, and then he's, you know, playing like the whole, <laughs> the whole yeah. jug. So, <laughs> but I would say the Sixers, and then I, you know what? And I'm not just saying this because you're here, but I will, I do think the Clippers. We'll get it done. I just think that they're – There we go. I think once they get there, I think last year really did shame them. And the fact that no one's saying that, that – That's, what I, that's exactly there. my point of view. Right. The you fact know. that everybody's already writing them off, and, and rightfully yeah. so. I mean, you're a fool at this point. If, if you've watched the NBA over the last 20 years, you're a fool if you think the Clippers should be the favorites. But, I mean, yeah. that's that's why I think I'm optimistic for the Clippers because last year, everybody, like the Kendrick Perkins and the chicken, uh, Skip Baylesses, like would be like, the Clippers are the best team and they're going to they're gonna be going to the finals and win it all. It's like, dude, shut up. Like the Clippers do not do well as favorites. <laughs> yeah. they, they do not want to be known as the team to beat. Like yeah. you know, they're the underdog and they beat you because it was unexpected. That's when they're at their best. So I know once Skip Bayless says it on some July it, day, it's it like, drives me Damn, crazy. Dude, you just, <laughs> so you just ruined like, it. He he gives Clippers fans a bad name. Like he, the stuff he tweets out, it's like, dude, you, just sh- keep your mouth shut, dude. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know you like the Clippers, but just like, uh it, it just drives me, it drives me crazy <laughs> when he does that. <laughs> I know. He <laughs> paid a ton, but he's the worst. Yeah. Who's uh who's your NHL prediction? I I, I haven't been watching a lot of hockey yet. Who who looks good? I mean, I, I I don't think I'm being biased with this, but the I mean, if good, they are huh? healthy, they are uh, the best team in the NHL right right now, standings wise. Well, they, we had gotten paused due to COVID um, last Friday, but before that, we're 39 and four. Um, we're the only oh, wow. team. We were the only team at the time to not have 10 losses or double digit losses. So wow. 
Uh, they're, they're a really good team. So I think if the abs are healthy, which they are, you know, COVID is, will be cured. And I think they're all vaccinated too. So by playoff time, um, that, that won't be an issue, but I would say the abs, um, and like, I would probably say the lightning. I think the abs and the lightning and I Again, think it, huh? lightning Tampa, yeah, Bay, it, Tampa Bay is just so solid. They're really they're so good. solid. They've just, they've won it. So they're experienced. They know what it takes to get there. And I just think it could be sort of a weird passing of the torch in a sense. Um, you know, so I'm not saying the abs are going to win, but I just think if the abs are playing it the way they are and healthy, uh, oh, yeah. it's going to be really tough. I'll root, to, I'll root for them for you, Brucey. Yeah. Thank you. It's just going to be <laughs> tough to have someone beat them four times. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. You know, so yeah. four times, good luck. I, yeah, you know. I think hockey is one of those sports where, aside from a goalie just getting insanely hot, where they just go, they get yeah. on the, the, because that's what really like it makes some of the magic stories in hockey when a goalie yeah. just gets unstoppable. But exactly. like, for the most part, the best team wins in hockey when you have seven games. For the most part, yeah. like if you're the better team, you win unless your goalie just becomes – you're literally you, – it's a brick wall. Like you can't get it past yeah. him. It's, it's really hard to hide your flaws in the playoffs, um, you know, and to kind of like – you can't get really lucky and get and get to the Stanley Cup. Like you really have to be playing really, really well. Um, so, I mean, if you're not on your A game and, and we just have a lot of guys that are young, healthy, it's really refreshing because we have a lot of guys on the team that – really just want to win and they will take the cuts and pay that they need to in order for the roster to, um, you know, stay that the way it is. And, and yeah. we have, I think the second best player in the NHL, uh, in Nathan McKinnon. So. Good for you. Dude. I'll, I'll root for the avalanche for you. I'll, I'll, Please. I'll cheer them on. That'd be, that'd be fun for you. I'll, I'll, you'll have to invite me out for the, uh, the celebration parade when that goes down too. I was just about to say, <laughs> you're trying to, you're trying to get a seat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far for you. No, but. I think the bar across the street has a seventy percent capacity. You could grab a seat over there. <laughs> That'd be dope. Um, <laughs> any any early baseball opinions? Early season baseball opinions? I'm sorry, your Rockies. You're out there in Colorado. Oh. The Rockies are probably the worst team in the sport this year. So yeah. you could get uh, like six dollar seats. That's on the on the bright side. You could get like you know real cheap seats to, to Coors Field. We expected it. Um, it's yeah. I mean, it sucks. I mean, I think it was just, it was so deflating when Arenado left and um, I think the Rockies management can't blame anyone, but themselves because he lost and, you know, knowing Arenado for the longest time was just pleading to get, you know, pitching help and, and roster um, not overhaul, but just some help. I mean, they let go of DJ LeMahieu, which I think will sting a lot of Rockies fans, obviously. And then he becomes the player that he does. And then Arenado leaving um, really sucks. Yeah. And it, I feel bad for a guy like, you know, Charlie Blackman and, I like Trevor's it's, story, but you know, they won their home opener, which was great. It was a really <laughs> nice day. You beat the champs. But I think after that, people understood like reality is about to set in, you know, yeah. fairly quickly. It's so. funny. I think the NL West has the two best teams in baseball with the the, the Dodgers and the Padres. Potters. I think those are the, yep. the two best teams, but the NL West, I think also has the two worst teams with the D-backs and the Rockies. I think those are the two worst teams. Yeah. So. And you know, I was thinking about this the other day. I thought, gosh, it's so cool that we're seeing a rivalry, like kind of reinvigorate itself with the Padres yeah. and the Dodgers. You know, that's totally. so cool. And, um, and what's cool about baseball is you get that so many times throughout a year, uh, which would be really, really cool. But I, I also am a – so I'm a big New York fan, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Yankee fan. And I'm, it's oh, obviously sorry. been extremely it's been disappointing a tough, so far. Tough COVID. I mean – you don't need to feel bad. I mean, 27 yeah. championships at all, but yeah. <laughs> so, and they've obviously been off to a really rough start, which sucks, but, um, yeah, not but really, what... but <laughs> I, mean, I, I hate the Yankees. I, I, I hate the Yankees so much. No, I, I don't blame you at all. I don't blame you at all. Um, I think they'll get back into it. I think Boston is, is, uh, yeah. playing a little fool's gold right now, but no, it's Possibly. been a really, I think um, the team to really beat for me headlines. in that division is the Blue Jays, man. The Blue Jays are really good. Young, young, talented. They have some solid veteran arms with Ryu, Robbie Ray. They have some good players. And I think that especially they got this new reliever, Merriweather. He's on the IL right now. He looks good yeah. in the closer in the closer role, though. So yeah, I don't know. I think the addition of Springer, too, you know. Um, yeah, Springer, he, he hasn't even played too. yet. He, he's supposed to make his debut, I think, this week. So that'd be fun. Yeah. But a guy that's been there and everything. The the Yankees are going to need pitching, but, you know, the Yankees are the Yankees. And if anybody is going to acquire pitching, you know, the Yankees have a track record of doing a pretty good job at it. So, Yeah. German's been off to a shaky start. It's funny because he wasn't even injured. He was suspended due to a felony or like, you know, assault. So you think he'd like, you know, he could play in his off time, but guess not. I hear Uh, hear he's he's kind of like a real douchebag in in, in the locker room. Like he's really not a fun guy. 
for what he got suspended for it wouldn't yeah. shock me but just go win me some games <laughs> uh, but yeah no it's it's been really exciting and, and what's really cool too is the all-star games coming here this year yeah i was gonna uh, ask you about that in colorado and and I, I i just i can't wait it's gonna be so much fun and, you can try and, to get tickets funny, yeah, so my uh, three of my buddies who work with me at the Avs have season tickets, and nice. they have four tickets. Really nice, and apparently they treated their season ticket members really well in regards to like playoff pricing or All Star. Yeah, not playoffs, but All Star <laughs> price. We yeah. probably offer two dollars a game for playoff price. This far right. in a yeah, if, if you place your deposit now, you can, yeah, for you playoff could, tickets, yeah, you, you can throw out first pitch. I swear to God. Uh, so, but yeah, we it was like seventy five bucks for the All Star game that they are that they got them for. Um, um, why why did Major League Baseball gift the Rockies the All-Star game when they they just like traded the best player in their franchise's history I know. for a very for, fragile go, fan for the le, the gobber the lefty the starting pitcher he's terrible. Oh, I know. It it, it really is funny because it's going to be like the least amount of Rockies fans. I mean, you're going to have Charlie Blackman that's probably about it playing <laughs> right. in the game and I know because every team's going to have one or or it might yeah. be story. It might be story. Yeah, who might, has not played well to start the season. So the one good player yeah. that the Rockies have has not played very great. So <laughs> they'll they will yeah they'll have a Blackman or a story because they could sell his jersey. Yeah, during the All Star game. So. <laughs> the All Star game. Yeah, it's but, funny. Yeah, very excited about that. All right, Bruce. All right, let's wrap it up. Let's go into our final segment. We're going to yeah. give you – I am call I call this segment the vicious minute. And what yeah. it is is uh, – well, initially it, the idea was to try to have like in, in um, the uh, Around the Horn ESPN show yeah. when, you know, everybody – is talking about different topics. Get the, the host gives them points for saying good stuff. And yeah. then the winner at the end gets like a minute to just say whatever they want. So if you, if you think of something that comes to you, like anything you're passionate about, literally like any random topic, anything you want to bring attention to at the end of this, I'll give you a minute to talk about it if you want. If not, sure. well, we can wrap it up at the end of this. But what we're going to do is the alternative is going to be some trivia. So I'll give you five questions. Okay. Right? I'm give you five trivia questions. I got a six bonus one for you, but the bonus one is just a fun one. So we'll 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 get to that one after at the end. But yeah. um, I got five questions for you, uh, kind of about you know things we talked about, Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, some Colorado stuff, a little bit about the Avalanche. And so um, we'll see how you do in these five questions related to topics about you and your life. So yeah, are you ready? Question number one. Fire away. Lincoln, Nebraska became the state capital in 1869 and was renamed after President Abraham Lincoln after his assassination. What was the original name of Lincoln before the name change? Mm. Wow. Damn. I, I can't give you the options because I know that you'll get it if you hear it. Oh, God. That, that, if that's any hint. Because I know if I said the option, you'll be oh, it's that. Oh man. Um not North. Gosh, I don't even What was the name of Lincoln before the city of Lincoln before changing uh, I, it? Honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, it was Firth, Omaha? That was in Omaha. No. Uh, All right. It's it it a, a Nebraska legislator in an effort to keep the capital in Omaha because it, it was in Omaha before it, it changed to Lincoln. Um, he decided to try to quote unquote honor president Abraham Lincoln after the civil war, after his assassination by renaming Lancaster Oh, like, damn. after, after the union supported president, president That's Lincoln, because, yeah. because the state of Nebraska had a lot of Confederate supporting citizens and the legislator was hoping that people would vote against moving the capital to Lincoln because he, he wanted to keep it in Omaha, but obviously that failed. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was, uh, God, I Lancaster. told you, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't tell I you if I said Lancaster, it's in Lancaster County, you would have gotten it. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> so, yeah. Over one. You're right. A, a, a hot start here on the vicious minute here for Bruce. <laughs> if I can bat 400, I'll take it. Okay. All right. Question <laughs> number two. In 1927, Edward Perkins invented the state's official soft soft drink to this day. What was the drink that Edward Perkins invented? I'll give you four options. A, A, Coca-Cola, B, root beer, C, Kool-Aid, or D, high C? Oh, C, Kool-Aid. That's a Nebraska. Yeah. Hastings. Yep. You Boom. got it. Edward Perkins two. invented Kool-Aid in 1927. He invented like the powder, the food drink, the fruit drink. Today. Yep. The state drink, the, the state soft drink of, of Nebraska, Kool-Aid. 
<laughs> we drink Di- a lot of. Yeah, they got a lot of diabetes in Nebraska too. <laughs> yeah, I think our our athletes gotta stop drinking it. We kind of suck at sports right now. <laughs> they're, getting right. Those, they're getting those cramps because they got too much Kool Aid sugar <laughs> running yeah. through their veins. <laughs> we gotta get out of our school water fountains for God's sake. <laughs> all right, well, all right, well, one for two, Bruce. Question number three. Before moving to Denver, um, Denver, Colorado in 1995, what was the name of the organization that became the Avalanche? So before they became the Colorado Avalanche, what was the name of the organization? What They were in a different city and they had a different name. Do you remember? Yep. They were the Quebec Nordiques. There you go. Um, Two for three, Brucey. Like that. Fun fact, that awesome? when, they, when, they were, when they were moving from Quebec, they were supposed to be called the Seahawks with a capital H, S-E-A capital H. A W K S. In my research, I found that. They shot that down. Yeah, it, it, it would that, that that change would have been rewriting the course of history because then the Seattle Seahawks wouldn't have been what their name was, and that would have been completely yeah. different too. So, yeah, the, Col- the Avalanche is a is a much better name. Yeah, we have avalanches here. I, I haven't seen a Seahawk <laughs> ever. Yeah, in my life. Yeah, no, there's no Seahawks in Colorado. This is... I don't even know what that is. <laughs> It seems like a cartoon falcon. <laughs> That's what it is. Exactly what it is. It's a cartoon falcon. All right. We're, we're two for three. Question number four. Can you name two of the Avalanche's top five point scorers in franchise history? Two of their top five. Um, Patrick Waugh. He is not one. Oh, no, Joe Sackick, obviously. Yeah, that's why I had two, because Joe Sackick is the obvious number one. He's yeah, the Joe guy. Sackick is obviously number one. 16, uh, 1,641 points. Geez, it's like 600 more than the next guy. I would say, is Gabe Landeskog on there? He is not. Nathan McKinnon? Mm-mm. <laughs> uh, Linfoot? Or no, Hey Duke, Hey Duke, Hey Duke. <laughs> you got one, Milan Hey Duke. All right, he's the, he's number four. Okay. He's number four. Uh, it goes Peter Stastny, yep. Michael Goulet, uh, Mich- or Michelle Goulet. Might be pronouncing yeah. it wrong. I can't remember. Mil- Milan Hayduk and Peter Forsberg. Oh, yeah. Duh. Peter Forsberg. Yep. 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 I can't you got that one. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. You got, you got Sackick and Hayduk. I like it. I was just speaking into the wind. You have to hear it. So. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, throwing, throwing some stuff out there. All right. <laughs> Three for four. Bruce, we're going to question number five. You're on a hot streak. You got, you, after missing the first one, you've really finished You finished strong here. And I think you, you, there's a good chance to get this one too. Question number five. Which one of these famous individuals did not graduate from the University of Nebraska? So this, I'm going to give you five people. You got to tell me the one that did not attend Nebraska. Is Johnny Carson on that list? Okay, go on. He is, he is, obviously. <laughs> the, famous, okay. the famous Johnny Carson is a TV personality. All right, who else? Yeah. All right. Mila Kunis, the actress, Tyrone Liu, the NBA player and coach, Alex Gordon, major league baseball player, retired, I think, last year, or Warren and Warren Buffett, investor, tycoon, philanthropist, Berkshire Hathaway. Hathaway. I would probably trade Mila Kunis for Warren Buffett in that case, but yeah, Mila Kunis did not <laughs> have the University of Nebraska. She did not. That's an easy one, but you know, it's Mila Kunis. I, I you know, I had to throw her in there, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. He, Alex Gordon did go to Nebraska, obviously. He played baseball. He was the number two pick to the Royals. And when I was a kid, we played Miami in the Super Regional to go to Omaha. And it was game two. And I was at that game. I was nice. in a skybox. And Gordo hit a home run and hit the He's a beast. light pole in the in the, oh. uh, in the back of the stadium. And he hit it like 440. I mean, he was just phenomenal. I mean, just watching the number two overall player. He was a third baseman then, wasn't he? He was third base. Yep. And then yeah. they obviously moved him to, uh, um, to left. But yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he was – I remember when he was coming up with the Royals, he he was the number one prospect, like in in baseball, like in those pipeline prospect rankings. He was yeah. like he was one of their top guys. He had a great career. Yeah, I don't know if Ryan Braun went the year before or after or after, but yeah, Gordon was picked number two. It was really fun, and glad he got a uh, title. We're gonna do a, the a, a sixth bonus question. Okay, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna finish the lyric. All right, okay. I'm gonna play a song. And I'm gonna I'm gonna play 20 seconds of a song, and you're gonna try to finish the lyric at the end of it. All right. Don't let it be WAP. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. I hear. It. 
<laughs> I know when you're going to pause it. We're the only bottle home. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that impression, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> so Bruce, Bruce used to band. sing this song all the time in our in our our night shifts at the Coyotes. Bruce. Uh, the worst part is like people would say, you know what, that doesn't sound bad. <laughs> it sounds better than the guy. I'm like, I'm taking a piece of crap and making it sound like that's a so funny. <laughs> oh, oh, good song choice. Good song choice. All right, Bruce, dude, you killed it. You went, you went five for six, five for six, so five for five. All right, the bonus question doesn't count. So you went five for five on the vicious minute. No, I, I appreciate that. I should study my my uh, hometown a little bit more. <laughs> Did you have any? Do you have anything that comes to mind you want to you want to talk about? Promote, plug, anything? Nothing to really plug or promote right now. Just hope everyone is safe. And give me a, give me a, why why should residents of the city of Denver, Colorado attend an avalanche game this season? I think obviously aside from them being extremely good, um, which is something I don't really need to sell or go into much depth. Um, I just think sports is in entertainment is going to be one of those last dominoes that when things are back, that's when we'll know that we're on a really good pace and, you know, getting back to um, a time when we can enjoy being around each other. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of value to that outside of a final score. And I think hockey games can, can be a really good representation representation of it. So, um, you know, come with whoever, who cares, whoever they're playing. I think it's just the idea of, you know, people being gathered safely, obviously, um, you know, and caring about something that's not a pandemic or politics or anything serious, you know, Take your mind off it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, just a fun escape. I mean, that is sports and, um, you know, it sounds cliche, but I think as this whole last year has gone on, it's almost made that more evident than ever. Um, of sports watching the is the game. best part about it is the camaraderie and the community that is it, you know, in, invented and, and created through sports, the lens of sports in general. So I yep. agree. I'll yeah, you know, those, those experiences are things that are going to help life feel a little bit more normal, normal and, you know, helping with, you know, creating more friends and getting back to, you know, being a community instead of, you know, everybody in their own little bubbles and quarantines. So yeah, I, agree. I think really model off of sports, how we live our lives, you know, so it's awesome. Well, well said, Bruce. That's a great way to end the podcast. I think that was a, a great hour and a half pod. And I think we we had some some good stuff in here. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. Any last words? Just thank you a ton and great to see you. Great, Bruce. Thank and you. And where's my invite for the wedding? Just kidding. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up here for episode 66 of Vicious Talk with Benny P. Don't forget to follow, uh, subscribe, rate, review uh, Vicious Talk with Benny P on SoundCloud podcasts uh we're, we're also apple Podcasts, google podcasts uh, and soundcloud as well go please also subscribe to our all things analysis page where we are um currently on a, a promoting a giveaway bruce have you seen we have a card giveaway so you you, you follow you follow all things analysis on on instagram or facebook or you subscribe on the website and you get an entry for potentially uh getting a, a, a team in our box break we're doing a don russ at 20 2020 nba box break so We'll let it, we're giving you know followers an opportunity to to join in on that. So if you, it, Bruce, you know, hop in on that if, when you get a chance. Done. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks, thanks uh, for joining in uh, episode sixty six of Vicious Talk. Remember to ask yourself at the end of the day: Are you vicious? Help me now.